In the 80s and 90s, going to the arcades was awesome because the graphics and sound were way better than any console or PC at the time. Often the first time you saw cutting edge video game history defining visuals was when you went to the mall. During the fighting game renaissance of the early 90s, the game that set itself apart visually was Virtual Fighter in 1993. 3D polygons were used in games in the past, but this was the first time we saw it on full-sized characters with expressive animations and realistic physics. Yes, the poly count is so low you could probably count them, but Virtual Fighter's 3D graphics were so impressive, it influenced Sony's decision to make the PlayStation based on 3D hardware instead of 2D hardware, meaning you could say Virtual Fighter is largely responsible for the way Final Fantasy VII looks, and one of the first polygonal waifus, truly cutting edge. As 3D games got popular, flagship titles in the biggest genres expanded their gameplay to accommodate the third dimension, and games like Mario 64 had to make more forgiving platforms because jumping in a 3D environment was much harder. While many genres moved to 3D gameplay, some of the most popular fighting franchises didn't, and still today these games have 2D gameplay, albeit with 3D graphics. This is sometimes referred to as a 2.5D fighting game where you have the same side-to-side -side 2D gameplay found in older sprite-based titles, but with 3D models and camera movement. In the fighting game community, 2D and 2.5D fighters have had far more tournament presence than their 3D counterparts, and this is why Tekken 7 is so interesting. It's the only 3D fighter to break a thousand entrants this year twice, with fierce international competition stemming from two decades of tournament play. There's no better time to get into Tekken, but its legacy 3D gameplay can take anyone coming from a 2D background out of their comfort zone. So what makes 3D so scary and different? <laughs> One of the classic goofs in 2D sprite-based fighting games was the fact that the characters on the two-player side were completely mirrored, likely to avoid having to redraw hundreds of animations. This creates two inconsistencies. The first one is when you have asymmetrical qualities in a character like Sagat's eye patch. Switching between one and two-player sides makes his eye patch magically teleport to the other eye during the match. The second inconsistency is with stances. Typically, right-handed boxers will fight in an orthodox stance where the left foot is pointing forward, and left-handed boxers tend to fight in the southpaw stance where the right foot is pointing forward. When both fighters use opposite stances like this, both our chests are open to one direction. This is called an open stance. But what if you mirrored Mayweather and Pacquiao? It would still be open stance, but Mayweather would suddenly be the southpaw and Pacquiao would be the orthodox boxer instead. This is exactly what happens in 2D sprite-based fighters when characters switch sides. Not realistic, but neither is this. Fast forward to Street Fighter V with 3D graphics, and you'll notice the eye patch problem is gone. But you'll also notice Vega still switches his claw hand when switching sides. This is because the game still forces open stances for gameplay purposes. Eye patches can be corrected because they're merely cosmetic, but claws act as visual indicators for an attack's 2D hitbox, and an open stance requires that the same attack is done with opposite limbs on opposite sides, just like in old sprite-based games. Again, realism need not apply. Having moves look the same on both sides helps the player recognize each attack and maintains that classic 2D feel. On the downside, this means you can't make a character that's missing a limb without resorting to some convoluted story involving magic to explain why they're using their other limb on the other side anyways. Or it can be like time killers and just hope no one notices. Tekken, however, cannot simply use the opposite limb for the same attack because its button scheme is laterality based and each button represents each limb. To show you the difference, let's compare Asuka from the 2.5D Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Asuka from Tekken 7. As you can see, the Tekken 7 Asukas have the same orthodox stance, allowing them to use the same right foot for her turning kick. This stance consistency allows you to establish a certain direction to sidestep to dodge certain attacks. Ooh, again, and as you call this, sidestepping to the left on Mishima's will defeat that electric. 데빌 전 같은 경우에 초풍이나 나락이 있으면 이두 가지는 이렇게 시계로 다 피해져요. 근데 그 반면에 그 시계를 잡는 기술을 쓰면 또그 기술이 반시계로 피해져요. JDCR이 대회 때 이제 피해서 잘 때리잖아요. 그 이해도가 솔직히 JDCR이 제가 생각했을 때는 다른 철권 플레이어보다 엄청 뛰어나서 대회 때 성적도 잘 나오고 그 상황을 잘 만들어요. 그 이해도에 따라서 그 게임 판이 좀 달라지는 것 같아요. Again, for gameplay reasons, characters default to orthodox making most fights close stance. Unless you're a bear and have neither stance. But Huarong is special in that he can change to a southpaw stance during the fight to throw his opponents off, which is indicative of his Taekwondo background. But playing in the opposite stance is tricky because your right and left attacks become reversed. 
but that's only a problem if you have right and left buttons in the first place. Virtual Fighter and Dead or Alive have only one button for punch and one for kick, which is how they're able to make it so everyone can switch between orthodox and southpaw. But because you can do any move in either stance, you really only have to see if the situation is open or closed to know which way to dodge and which combos to use. This is called stance checking. All this might seem complicated, but these 3D games are much simpler in other areas. For example, they take away the air game complexity of 2D fighters almost entirely. You may have noticed that as the Virtual Fighter and Tekken series evolved, they've toned down their anti-gravity jumping while increasing the role of ground movement. An intense ground movement is exactly what we're seeing in the new Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur 2 のような早いレスポンスっていうのと In Tekken, advanced dash cancelling techniques allow for a very expressive spacing game, and the crazy whiff punishes that follow are what make high-level Tekken matches so great to watch. You're waiting for that opportunity, wow! Do you see how he made that whiff? Not on my watch, it says! Of course, 3D movement means boundaries have to work differently. In 2D fighters, it's usually very simple. You have walls on the left and right sides of the screen where you can't go any further, and the goal is to corner your opponent on one side to put them at a disadvantage. This concept exists in pretty much every 2D fighter. In contrast, the big 3D franchises tried a variety of things. Virtual Fighter and Soul Calibur used sumo wrestling-styled ring-out systems where getting out of the fight zone resulted in a round loss and hilarious post-round ledge hopping. Tekken did the opposite and started with infinite stages where there are no boundaries at all. This meant that there was no penalty for moving backwards, which resulted in strategies like this in one of Eris' favorite Tekken matches. Look at this, look at the ha ha step from Kembo. Already representing this is the kind of fight it's gonna be. You're using top tier characters, so I'm just gonna run away the whole time. So when Tekken 4 came around, they experimented a bit with not only walls, but uneven terrain, obstacles, and even ceilings. This was the birth of Tekken's wall splat mechanic, but it was poorly implemented and resulted in stuff like this. Later iterations of the game ditched uneven terrain and obstacles, but decided to keep wall splats by fixing them. Breakable walls and floors were introduced as combo extenders, and now the stage is a significant determiner of matchup balance. All this may seem pretty daunting for 2D folk, but Bandai Namco has added 2D characters in Tekken 7. But in a very bold move, they actually brought over their 2D mechanics with them in the Tekken universe, and they actually feel like you're playing a 2D game. Harada mentioned this is much more possible when converting a 2D character to 3D than the other way around. Makes sense. Tekken now has meter, special cancelling, and some of the air game complexity of 2D fighters. Understandably, this was jarring to long-time Tekken fans. But this is why I think the guest 2D character approach works. Legacy players are already good at the game, so they can deal with the newer stuff that comes in. At the same time, it gives 2D players a familiar footing to start on. But Harada says this isn't even their main goal. They just wanted to create hype. Are you serious? What? By attracting new players like this, they're able to keep much of their legacy gameplay, so you still get your electrics, wave dashing, and of course... Oh my god! Oh. Jet Let me know in the comments which crossover DLC character you'd like to see, or if you just want your old characters back. Come talk about this video and other fighting game stuff in the Core A Gaming Discord. This was Gerald, thanks for watching.